as I discussed before, the light cannot penetrate the bleeding. So it's important to stop the bleeding before a scan. Here's a scan with the bleeding around the margin. So it's very difficult here to record the margin and very difficult to detect and to determine the final margin of the restoration. So our rule is to select the ideal tissue management protocol to achieve vertical horizontal displacement and to achieve ideal hemostasis without any heavy pressure in soft tissue and without any trauma to the soft tissue that might lead to further soft tissue recession. So usually the tissue management protocol are three. The first one are the chemomechanical method, which is the most famous method, like retraction court. The second one is the chemical method like retraction based. And finally, the surgical method like laser and diatherm or electrosurgery. Retraction cord usually as a chemomechanical method is the most famous method and the most common material used for many of the dentists. Retraction cord usually have many classification. According to the size, we have triple zero, we have double zero, we have zero and one, two and three according to the size. And sometimes we have impregnated cord and non-impregnated cord. And we have a knitted design, we have twisted design, and we have a braided design. So it's better and more preferable to use knitted design because after placing the knitted cord in the sulcus, it can absorb some of the cravicular fluid and the bleeding with more expansion, with further and more soft tissue retraction horizontally and vertically. So the knitted design is the most commonly used retraction cord for its benefits. So usually after replacing the cord here, it can expand and moving the gingiva and retracting the gingiva in a vertical and horizontal direction to expose the margins. How we can apply retraction cord? First of all, I'm starting from the deepest sulcus to then moving to the shallowest sulcus interproximally or buccally and lingually according to the probing depths and usually I like to place the cord with serrated retraction cord becker or I can use rounded end retraction cord becker. So we should apply the pressure in a very gentle way to avoid soft tissue recession or to avoid heavy trauma on the soft tissue. Again, how to achieve the ideal hemostasis with the retraction cord? The retraction cord can achieve a good vertical and good horizontal displacement. But how we can achieve hemostasis? Usually, if the retraction cord is impregnated or non-impregnated, I like to soak the retraction cord in hemostatic solution. And usually, my preferred solution is viscostat clear, which is a clear gel that can be used for hemostasis, it contains 25% aluminum chloride. So I am soaking the cord in this gel for around five minutes. Then after removal of the cord from the gel, I will make drying for this gel to avoid any trauma from excessive chemicals around the gingiva. And then I am placing the cord into the sulcus and it will achieve a very nice and very good hemostasis. Aluminium chloride is also very effective in hemostasis and it will not do any discoloration or any pigmentation to the soft tissue or to the tooth, unlike the ferric sulfate because ferric sulfate can cause a lot of discoloration and a lot of pigmentation in the gingiva and the dentine surfaces. So for me, it's better to use aluminium chloride gel or aluminium chloride solution in posterior teeth and even in anterior teeth to avoid any discoloration of the ferric sulfate. And then I'm going to detect the margins using manual margin detection or thanks to the very nice tool of medit margin, which is automatic margin detection. If your margins are very clear and the gingiva are retracted enough, you can select or you can detect your margin in one second with automatic margin detection.